Ran, I need another episode of Fully Cinematic. When Jurassic Park hit theaters back in 1993, it went on to become the highest grossing film of all time up to that point, eventually grossing $1 billion at the box office without adjusting for inflation. It's not that surprising. It gave us what we believe are realistic looking dinosaurs and was universally loved. Then the sequel was released. Not satisfied with merely being a movie, The Lost World also set a pattern of the middle chapters of Jurassic trilogies being the worst of their respective sets. And while Fallen Kingdom did manage to gross 10 figures at the box office, it followed The Lost World right into the dumpster. With all that said, let's take one last look at Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and then forget it ever happened. Forever. We begin with a pair of mercenaries searching the area around Isla Nublar, where Indominus Rex remains in a submersible. Upon discovering the skeleton, they saw off a piece of rib cage and send it floating up to their colleagues. But unfortunately, a Mosasaurus notices their sub right around Miller time and relieves their shady corporate employers of two minions. On land, a T-Rex chases down another one, but the guy's lucky and fast enough to reach the ladder on the escaping chopper until he ends up being a chaser for the Mosasaurus. Three years later, Jeff Goldblum argues against saving the terrible lizards from an impending volcanic eruption at a Senate hearing. Conversely, Ron Howard's daughter now heads up the Dinosaur Protection Group, a nonprofit with a self-explanatory name. She's invited to the home of Benjamin Lockwood, the gazillionaire partner of the late John Hammond, founder of Jurassic Park. Lockwood plans to relocate 11 species of dinos to a sanctuary on yet another island. Big Red's role includes recruiting her ex, Owen Grady, former Velociraptor Wrangler, because he's the only person who can capture the last raptor, Blue. While Owen, Claire, and her colleagues, Franklin and Zia, head to Nightmare Isle, we're introduced to Lockwood's granddaughter, Maisie. We'll get back to her later. Back on the land of time for God, Franklin hacks into the park's tracking system with the help of Claire's handprint, and Owen and a team of mercs head off to do the dirty work. But before leaving, Owen tells Ginger that should he fail to survive, she should remember that she pressured him into coming in the first place. After locating Blue, both she and Owen are shot with tranquilizers. Blue's also shot with a good old-fashioned bullet. And back at the command center, Claire and Franklin are locked in and left for dead. Owen, who was left for dead in Dinovania, comes face to face with a Sinoceratops before recovering enough from the sedative to roll out of the way of encroaching lava. Meanwhile, lava begins to flood the command center just as the dinosaur makes its way in. It's around this time that Franklin, the only black man in the film with any significant screen time, begins to scream like a bitch. You, Hollywood. Anyway, he and Claire narrowly escape just in time to be reunited with Peter Quill as dinos stampede towards them fleeing the percolating volcano. Except they inadvertently lock themselves in a parked vehicle that rolls off a cliff and have to be rescued by Owen in order to avoid drowning. Because Zia is a paleo veterinarian, the mercs take her along to treat Blue. And after the island trio just barely manages to sneak aboard the cargo ship just after it leaves the dock, they reunite with Zia and help her to get Blue a transfusion using blood from a T-Rex. This feat is only made possible by Owen and Scarlet obtaining the donor blood during a harrowing encounter involving the former diving through the sedated giant's closing jaws. Back in California, we learn that Lockwood's protege, Eli, is planning to auction the dinos to the rich and shameless. He's also cooked up a scheme with Dr. Henry Wu, the mastermind who figured out how to clone the dinosaurs in the first place, to create weaponized Indominus Rex slash Velociraptor hybrids to be used in war. And that wraps up the good section of the movie. It goes from sugar to shit at about the halfway point when the story shifts entirely to the States. Lockwood is dumb enough to confront Eli about his intentions in private and naturally he responds by smothering his ass with a pillow. This dingbat actually expecting an exotic animal smuggler and would be arms dealer to turn himself into the police. Yeah, okay. Before they can alert the authorities, Owen and Carrot Top are captured and imprisoned on Lockwood's estate, where Claire's called out for knowingly exploiting endangered species and authorizing the creation of the Indominus Rex for financial gain back at Jurassic World. After being locked in her room, Maisie sneaks out just as the guests are arriving for the auction and discovers to her horror that her grandpappy is dead. She also sees a picture of her mother for the first time and notices that they look exactly alike. Meanwhile, Owen liberates himself and his cellmate by goading a Stygio Moloch into breaking through the brick wall between their cells and subsequently through the cell door. 
They immediately meet Maisie and eavesdrop on the auction where the Indoraptor prototype is sold for $24 million, despite Dr. Wu's protests. I still don't get why Eli is so impressed by that sales figure. You'd think that the only animal of its kind on the planet would easily be worth much more than two dozen M's. Not to mention the fact that this mother mentor is a billionaire. Anyway, Owen disrupts the event by unleashing the Stygio Malik on the crowd, and after the room empties, head mercenary Wheatley attempts to extract an Indoraptor tooth for his collection. But the unholy creature was only pretending to have succumbed to his tranquilizers and eats his ass up. When Eli catches up to Owen, Claire, and Maisie, he lets them know that the latter isn't really Lockwood's daughter. She's a clone of his daughter, which is the reason that Hammond terminated their partnership. Elsewhere on the grounds, Franklin frees Zia after injecting Wu with a sedative. She in turn opens Blue's cage, allowing her to eat the mercenaries guarding the lab. Meanwhile, the Indoraptor hunts Owen, Maisie, and Claire through the castle after chowing down on the security guards accompanying Eli. They split up and just as Maisie's about to be wolfed down, Owen shows up to put some hot ones in the Indoraptor. Unfortunately, it shakes it off and as it targets Owen, Blue attacks to save him. When Owen and Maisie escape to a rooftop, the Indo follows, but Claire shows up with a specialized dinosaur rifle and for some reason sets her laser sight on Star-Lord's chest and hits the button, signaling it to attack. Luckily, Blue shows up again, jumping on the Indo's back, causing them both to crash through the skylight and the Indoraptor is impaled on the dino skeleton below. After Red wises up, following her initial intention to do the same thing, Maisie's dumbass opens the door to all of the dinosaur cages and they all escape into the California woods. After a couple pause to snack on Eli, of course, cut the jip and Goldblum warning the Senate panel of the dangers of introducing dinosaurs in the modern ecosystems. Oh, and if you just can't resist watching this piece, there is a brief post credit scene. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is a pretty accurate title, given that the movie is an enormous step down from its predecessor. Jurassic Park kept with the tradition of killing a black character first, and Kingdom features the cliche of the black guy being a pussy. Say what you want about Jurassic World, it represented a mammoth comeback for the series and resurrected it much like Hammond's team of scientists reintroduced dinosaurs to the world. JWFK pissed all over that. And taking the blah blah dons and yada yada sauruses out of the park has never worked out very well in any of these stories which is a lesson that should have been learned from the lost world. Talk about taking two steps forward and one giant step back. But hey, some mother are always trying to ice skate uphill. In other news, it's time to highlight a few comments the viewers left on previous videos. After watching the Christmas episode, Kid Sam said, awesome channel, like the content. Appreciate you saying that, Sam. Responding to the Benedetta early review, Quiet Storm said, Ran TV, I'm intrigued, but terrified. I get it, Quiet Storm, it's quite a spectacle. And commenting on the Top Gun Maverick better be worth the wait show, Fresh Out the Shower said, Maverick definitely better be good. I think it will be, and I'm ready to see it. I hate I missed out on the good seats for the early screening. Firestarter is one of my favorite Stephen King movies. Overall, I like the movie, but I think they dropped the ball on how good it could have been. I might do a review on it. For anyone who didn't see the original in the 80s, I wouldn't recommend going back to watch it now. The cast and Drew Barrymore as the mother would have been dope. I wasn't too big on the last Jurassic movie, but I'm definitely going to see this one. It looks like it's going to be better. To me, the only returning actor worth mentioning is Jeff Goldblum. LOL. I agree, Fresh. Somebody definitely dropped the ball on Firestarter. And keep the detailed comments coming. I love it. Shout out to Kid Sam, Quiet Storm, and Fresh Out the Shower for dropping comments. And shout out to everybody who hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But I've had enough of this conversation, and I've definitely had enough of this whack-ass movie. So I'm logging off. Fully cinematic.